Thank you. Uh, before we get started, I was going to ask all of you if we'll just take a moment of silence uh, to try to remember all those that are on our, our on our memorial wall at starting point. We're over 800 names on that wall now, and uh, just take a minute of silence for them. Thank you. Well, I have a few announcements I want to share with you. Uh, we're setting up our new YouTube channel, and you can actually ac access it by going to our website. There's a link. You can also access uh, access it. I said access it. Sure, access it by basically putting Starting Point Inc. of New Jersey in. So basically, we're using our new educational programs, and so now. My addiction series and will be both on Vince's corner and also on the YouTube also. So the things we do here will be on both places. Okay. Also our anger management podcast is on there with Gary Doc. Also myths and conceptions about grief, which was done last week by Pat Oops, our grief counselor. And then basically we have new ones coming up. Okay. We're going to be doing a, a, a workshop by CP Marachi on gambling. Uh, Pat um, Ann Cavalier, one of our therapists, will be doing it on um, eating disorders for Eating Disorder Week. And then Pat O'Connor will be do parenting. And so we have a lot of stuff coming up. We have a, a lot of good, a lot of our counselors are volunteering to put together podcasts for our educational program. So you can check that out by going to the YouTube channel. And we ask you, if you do go, to please subscribe because we get, it doesn't cost anything. If you subscribe, then we reach 500, then it becomes a, a connection automatic. So it's kind of nice. All right. I also want to mention that we have a new group called the Wishing Well Community at Starting Point, and they're recovery support groups. Gary Doc, our therapist, and two other therapists, Brooke and Angela, are putting together support groups for people in recovery. Information about that is on the website, and they'll be on Mondays and Wednesdays, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at night. You can check into that also, okay? I also want to mention that David Diamond is doing his workshop this Saturday uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon. And his title is Sounds of Healing, Sounds of Healing and Love Using Sound Therapy. Okay, that's at one o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, Zoom numbers for that are also on the website, startingpoint.org. You can check all that out. And last but not least, we do pass a basket, though we don't have a basket to pass. So we have Venmo. Venmo is our new basket. And starting point Venmo number is in the chat room. You can check it from there. Okay. Everything else you can find on the website, and you can check that out. I want to begin tonight by doing the reading from the language of letting go. And I picked the reading from November 1st. Tonight, we're starting our grief process, our, our grief series. And I'll be doing an overview of the grieving process tonight. And then next two weeks, I'll be concentrating more specifically on different stages of grieving. And then in our fourth week, I'll be introducing Pat Oakes, our grief therapist, who will be talking to you based around the concept of therapy and grief. In November 1st, transformation through grief. We're striving for acceptance and recovery. Acceptance of ourselves, our past, other people, and our present circumstances. Acceptance brings peace, healing, and freedom, the freedom to take care of ourselves. Acceptance is not a one-step process. For we achieve acceptance, we go forward in stages of denial, anger, negotiating, and sadness. We call these stages the grief process. Grief can be frustrating. It can be confusing. Maybe we may go back and forth between sadness and denial. Our behaviors may change. Others may not understand us, neither understand ourselves nor our own behavior while we're grieving our losses. Then one day things become clear. The fog lifts and we see that we have been struggling to face and accept a particular reality. Don't worry, if we are taking steps to take care of ourselves, we'll move through this process at exactly the right pace. Be understanding with yourself and others for the, for the very human way we go through transition. They will accept the way I go through change. 
I will accept the grief process and its stages as the way people accept loss and change. I wanted to read that tonight because I wanted to emphasize that term, that the grieving is a process. There's something we all go through. I often say that grieving is what I call the ultimate process of life. And basically each and every one of us on a daily basis go through some form of grieving process. So in order to make you understand this over the next three weeks, I want to use an analogy. The analogy comes from scripture, it's a story. And I'll be covering a lot of this over these three weeks. The analogy goes like this. A farmer went out to sow some seed. Some of the seed fell on a rock. Some of the seed fell amongst shallow sandy soil. Some of the seed fell amongst weeds and thorns. And some of the seed fell on good ground. The seed that fell on the rock had no place to go, it couldn't grow, it had no roots, no foundations. So eventually it got blown away or the birds came and ate it. The seeds that fell amongst the shallow sandy soil started to grow, but the soil was too shallow and sandy, it could not develop roots. The seed that fell among the weeds and thorns started to grow, but the weeds and thorns grew alongside of it and eventually choked it. The seeds that fell on the good ground went down deep inside. They formed roots and foundations. And from roots and foundations, beautiful things came from that. I equate that story to the grief process because it is a process. And unfortunately, we have to go through stages to be able to experience the grieving process. Kubler-Ross wrote a book years ago called Death and Dying. And just like our AA program, I truly believe that the founders of AA, Bill W. and Dr. Bob, when they put the program together, never envisioned it will become so widespread as it is today in different forms of addictions. Just like Kubler-Ross, when she wrote Death and Dying, she wrote it primarily for those going through the loss. And really, she was working a lot with cancer victims and victims that were going through transition to the, to the process of death. And so in her book, she writes about the five stages of grieving. And those stages really are the stages of life in grieving. The stages are denial, anger, bargaining, sadness, and acceptance. And unfortunately, coming to acceptance is not an easy thing. We have to go through our struggle to come to it. It's easy to come to it intellectually, but to come to it for real, in our heart, in our gut, in every aspect of our life, takes work and takes time. And so many times people go through the grieving process through the aspects of struggle. Well, let me give you a theory just for a couple of minutes. People ask me all the time, how long does the process take? The theory is that most grieving processes take anywhere from 18 months to three years. Now that's theory. But in reality, it could take a lot longer. Everyone goes through it at their own pace, at their own level. Also try to remember, it's not something that's cookie cutter. It doesn't go through the stages just the way they are. We can go back and forth between stages for long periods of time till we finally come to that beautiful stage of acceptance, which only comes over the struggle and going through process of grieving. And so many of us kick and scream and go through grieving, and sometimes we go through it in very many different ways. Whenever I explain it, I try to explain it from four different perspectives. Physical, emotional, spiritual, and social. These are the four levels we go through in grieving. And basically, I often refer to grieving as something we all go through every day of our life. What does it mean? It means we can't go back to what was because it's over. Although many of us would like to, but we can't. We have to move forward. We have to keep growing, moving forward in a new direction. That comes sometimes through pain. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about because I wanna talk a little bit now about denial and about anger, and also a little bit about bargaining. Denial, I have to say this, you know, because I like, I need to say it. Denial is not a bad word. 
It has a purpose. Everything in life has a purpose. And many of us go into denial and go into anger and bargaining for survival purposes. Now I'll tell you a story and show you what I mean. When I was a priest, I used to visit the Naval Hospital, you know, over in South Philadelphia. And I met this gentleman there. I don't want to use his real name, I'll just say Bob. I met this gentleman there who was a Navy veteran who had lost both his legs in the war and basically was given a very interesting wheelchair for him to get around in. He also had lost part of his arms. Now, he told me his story, and he said that for two years, he was living in hell, even to the point where two or three times he wanted to commit suicide. He went through struggle. He went through fighting. He went through battling with what, what things were going on. Then he said one day, a chaplain spent some time with him and said to him, I want you to be able to look at your legs and grieve their loss. I want you to look at parts of your arms and grieve their loss. They were a part of you. You need to be able to say goodbye to them to say hello to the new part of you. Now he explained this to me, but he also told me that he didn't care for that chaplain too much. In fact, he even told me some of the names he called that chaplain. But the chaplain stayed with him, came back to visit him, worked with him. And now he understood, he said to me, that I really have to be able to look at where I am today with gratitude. But it was a long journey, Vince. He said, I struggled like crazy. And I don't know how many times I wanted to give it up. But I know God sent that chaplain into my life to have the patience to stay with me and to take me through the grieving process. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd be saying goodbye to, to my legs, allowing them to move on, to say goodbye to things. And I, I use his experience because that's something all of us have to go through because we all experience loss. We all experience change. We all experience going into new areas of our life, even growing older. We go through the grieving of moving to a new level in our life. You know, yes, many of us would like to go through. The, the Indian book tells us we have child, we have young adult, we have adult, then we have elder, and then we have death. And we move on, the cycle goes on in life. Coming to an acceptance of that is not always easy. And yet it's part of what we have to go through in our struggle. And sometimes we have a hard time saying goodbye to what we could do, saying hello, what we can do now, change. We take this to another level when we talk about death for a couple of minutes. Because very many times people experience situations where they experience sudden death or we experience situations where people go through the process of death. You'll notice in hospitals that normally, they can't do it right now, I know, but normally when someone dies and the family isn't there, they actually call the family, ask the family to come over to actually view the body, to view the person. The purpose behind that is to start the grieving process going. So it can become concrete. It's painful, it's scary, and yet it's real. And we talk about this because so many times, and we've experienced this now with the pandemic and what's going on where a lot of people are dying where their families can't go to their bedside. Where nurses now have been given the role of family. Where nurses have to use iPads to have them connect to their family at the end. And it's painful because you want to say goodbye. You want to go through that process in life. But also you have to understand what happens a lot of times, for example, with people where someone may be in a plane, a, a plane crash or lost at sea, or even someone who is lost at war. Where you never really see the remains. You never see the individuals, you never see the situation. And as a result, then very many times, it's harder to go through grieving because you wonder deep down inside, maybe they're still alive, maybe they're gonna show up, maybe they're gonna come home. And many of us have gone through that process in a very tough way. 
and it's scary. I know in my own life and I can share this because I know I was in denial for a long period of time. I lost my father when I was 26 years old. I was ordained a priest three months when I lost my dad. And I realized today I never truly, truly grieved my father's death until later on, especially in my 40s, when I finally began to deal with stuff and look at life in a different way. Why? Because I was frozen, I was shut up inside, and I was working basically on the outside. I conducted my father's funeral. I preached at his funeral, helped the undertaker actually dress him. I took care of the party afterwards. I did, I was a one man show for my father's funeral. And that, that's really weird, strange, and sad. But I realized I did that only because I was frozen and my logic, here's my head again. My logic was, if I could do it for everybody else, why can't I do it for him? And later on, I did the exact same thing for my mother. And so I realized over and over again that it took me a while to go through the grieving process. It took me a while to get in touch with my feelings. And so many times we have a tendency to cl close off our feelings through the aspect of denial. We're not ready to look at them. And I really believe this today. You're only ready when you're ready. I use the example of my aunt who was in a wheelchair, who lived over in Pensalkin. And I can remember when her brother died. Now she lived with her brother, both of them were never married. And her brother came home from work one day and actually had a massive heart attack and died on the living room floor. When they found her later on, basically she was, actually worked her way out of the wheelchair onto the floor, was putting cold compresses on his head. And in her mind, her brother had just fainted. And if you went to visit her, even after the funeral, after everything took place and everything else, you went to visit her, you could look into her brother's room. It was like a mausoleum. It was like a memorial. Everything was in place, ready for him to go to work the next day. See, so many times we have a tendency to want to do that because many of us do need memorials. We need remembrances. We need to see things in life that help us to remember the past, to remember things that have happened in the course of our life because it's all inside of us. It's all part of our journey. It's all part of the change we go through. And that goes to other areas of life too. And that's why sometimes it's good to be able to go back. And I'm grateful we have a memorial wall at starting point. We passed the 800 mark with those names on there. And I'm grateful because it is a memory. It is a place where we can pray. It's a place where we can remember. There are things that are important. I never fully understood this. When I was a kid, we had a tradition in our Italian family. And I'm going back now to the late 40s and early 50s. One of the traditions was that every Sunday afternoon, the family would get together with a picnic basket and we'd head for Calvary Cemetery. Now, this wasn't exactly the park. It was Calvary Cemetery. And we would go each week on Sunday afternoon to different relatives' graves. They would put a blanket down and we'd have a party and we'd have a picnic on the grave. It was a way for them to remember. What we didn't realize what they were actually doing is participating in the process of grieving. They were feeling the sadness, they were feeling the loss, they were reconnecting. And so there are many ways that many traditions and many people do grieving. We see that in many aspects of life. Each has their own tradition and their own way of doing it. But we have to understand something, that sometimes we have to fight and battle to go through this process. That's why sometimes we can actually go through bargaining for a long period of time, trying to figure it out. Why did this happen? Because one of the hardest things we have to do, especially when we lose someone in death or when we lose someone in a relationship, very many times we have a tendency to be angry. And by the way, don't get me wrong, anger is a healthy emotion. If it's processed, if it's not processed, if it's put inside, It'll eat you alive and become depression. And that's why it's important to be able to express it. And yet so many times 
We are angry because somebody close to us dies. But we are afraid to feel the anger because we feel like we're being disloyal. We feel like we shouldn't do that. But guess what? I could be angry and love someone at the same time. You can feel that in relationships and everything else we do in life. I think sometimes we don't think we have the right to do that. We feel guilty doing it. But in reality, it is necessary. And that's why it's part of the process of grieving we have to go through. Even in relationships, if you end a relationship, I can intellectually say in my head, I'm glad it's over. Wow, glad to get out of here. That's, a, that's an intellectual statement. But a part of you is angry because you invested a period of your time in that relationship and it didn't work. So there is anger involved in that. There's also bargaining involved in it because I get into the concept of, you know, why, why, why? Very many times, even in our relation with God, we ask that question over and over again, why? This is all normal. It's part of grieving. We even get angry at God. Why did you make this happen? We see this in different areas of our life. Even we go through major changes in life. We go through job changes. We go through a loss of something. We have experienced this right now with the pandemic. A way of life that we had for a long period of time all of a sudden came to an end. And now we have a new section of life. Part of us is angry because I want that old section back. But also a part of me has to someday come to a point of sadness where it's not going to come back. Something new will come from it. And we'll have to adjust again accordingly. Addicts know what I'm talking about. When you put down drugs and alcohol or put down any addiction and you start a new development of life, you actually grieve the loss of the old. There's transformation through grief. Because even though it was a very unhealthy lifestyle, you at least were comfortable in it. You knew how to function in it. It was normal to you. And now, as you go into another new lifestyle, it's, you're uncomfortable. It's the unknown. And that's why sometimes I can actually grieve. You can grieve the loss of an addiction, the loss of a lifestyle, the loss of behavior, the loss of different things. It's all normal. And so the stages of grieving are something we go through at different times. I'm going to share another story with you. And this is a sad story. It's of a gentleman I worked with for a long period of time from Philadelphia, who as a child, severed extremely abusive behavior, sexual behavior from his mother, and also from a clergyman in partnership with his mother. It was a very horrible situation. And yet he spent the majority of his life in anger and bargaining, anger and bargaining. And he wanted to know why. And then he continued to go after the church or institutions or things to that effect. And so his, his mother and the clergyman were now gone. They were dead. And yet they still had power over him because he kept giving them power. Because instead of feeling the sadness and coming to a place of peace with it, he stayed in the stuck stage. Now, so many people get stuck in that stage. You see it in relationships. When we stay in relationships, even though we're upset, we're angry, we don't want to be in there, but we hang in because we don't know how to experience a process called death, to watch something come to an end so that something new can be born. And that's that sadness stage. Later on in the third talk, I'll talk a lot about that concept of death, of watching a part of us come to an end so something new can be born. But I look at this process we're going to go through, this grieving process, and realize that it is what I call the ultimate process of life. It's a process we all go through daily. I mean, I smile about this, but I think when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror, and you look back at things from before, and I'll tell you a story. A good friend of mine, who I've known for 50, oh, more than that, probably have known him for almost 58 to 60 years. I, I performed his wedding. He, and again, he's married 53 years today. And he sent me photographs of his wedding. 
that I performed 53 years ago. I was 26 years old when I did it. And it was really interesting because it was a, we were in the church, my Lady Mount Carmel in Camden, where I, where I, was, I was raised, I was ordained, everything was there. And basically, it was him and his bride and me performing it. While at 26, dressed in the priest outfit and performing a wedding, God, did I look different. It was actually weird in a way. Even Loretta couldn't recognize it. She was trying to figure, she thought it was me and my wife getting married and the other guy was a priest. She didn't know what was going on. But it was just totally amazing. You look at that, then you look at yourself today, you see the changes that took place. You can't go back. That's another period, another phase of life. Same thing when you make a major change in your life. Leaving the priesthood was a major change in my life that was necessary because I spent too many unhappy years fighting, battling, and going through a grieving process, trying to say goodbye to it. It leads me to another aspect of grieving. Some people actually start the grieving process before they actually experience the death process. Let me kind of give you an example of this. When I was a young priest at Vineland, I had the opportunity to meet a particular lady who was dying of cancer at age 29 years old. She had two children, her husband. You know, it was a pretty tough situation. And for me, I really believe today, she was one of my greater teachers in life. She helped me through a process of life. Although I guess I was supposed to be helping her. But I really understand how she actually worked with her husband, with her kids, to help them to understand that this was going to happen, that she needed to basically say goodbye to them. And she worked with them and with me. As I said, I was learning when I was going through this, helping her to be able to say goodbye to her family and helping her family to try somehow to work through it. So that grieving process was actually starting in that family way before she left. And even when she died, I remember, I'll never forget this as long as I live. You know, she said to her children, she said goodbye, hugged them, said goodbye to her husband and hugged them, and then asked that they leave. She asked that I stay with her and hold her hand. And I stayed with her as she passed on to the other side. You know, that's a powerful experience. And I know she was a pretty strong person to be able to go through that. But she truly, truly had a deep spirit. And basically, that's some of the examples I use when we actually start the grieving process way before the event takes place. In relationships, a lot of times, many of us have started the grieving process in a relationship way before we made the decisions about it. That's where denial, anger, bargaining, trying to figure it out, the analyzation, all that stuff comes into play. So you could actually be in the grieving process way before you make a decision. I can relate to this in my own life because I realize now that denial, anger, and bargaining was a big part of me in the priesthood because I didn't really want to be there. And to have to finally work through that and make that decision wasn't easy because I'm letting go of the lifestyle I was used to to go into the unknown. And sometimes we have to walk into the unknown. And that's why the grieving process is one of what I refer to as one of the most important processes of life. And it has stages to it. But like I said, those stages are in cookie cutter stages. We go through them and we're ready to go through them. But it's a process. You know, I really want to relate this to a few minutes, especially to those who have lost younger people. It's always tough when someone young dies, especially those who have lost people through drug addiction and those who may have lost them through taking their own lives in different situations. You know, the things we can try to understand, but will never understand. As a result, then we realize the fact that this is even tougher because to lose someone that young is extremely painful. And it's something that is embedded. And the grieving process is tough and hard 
and you'll be asking that question why for a long period of time. And you will try to go over and over and over. You'll even get into blaming yourself. If only I had seen this, if only I had seen that, if only I was able to do this, if only I was able to do that, maybe this wouldn't have happened. If only I, back and forth, we try to figure this thing out. That's what that bargaining stage really is all about. We put ourselves through it. It's painful because we're trying to find an answer. And I said before, we're trying to find an answer to things there really are no answers to. And so as a result, then we eventually have to feel that sadness. We have to be able to feel that loss. And we have to be able sometimes just to try to remember. But that pain is in here. And that pain will be a long period of time. Any parent that has lost a child, you'll say this, I know. You'll say, this is not the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to go first before you. Let's see, it's almost like, here we go again. It's a process I have to look at and I have to deal with. There's a sadness involved in this. And that's part of the grieving process also. And many of us don't want to feel sad, and yet we have to. It's part of the process of, of growing and learning. And so throughout life, grieving is part of the life process, as I call it. And I find it interesting because Patrick Carnes said this. He said that the 12-step program, the 12 steps, are the ultimate beautiful process for grieving. He described the steps as a process for grieving, a process for change. I'll get into some of that in the sessions that are coming up, but I really feel strongly about this process because I realize how important it is for us to be able to say goodbye. You know, I'll share one more story with you. I remember the night before my mother died. My mother, you know, was a woman that was very sick for a long period of time had a very hard time letting go. And the doctor said to me, she, she said, Vince, you're gonna to have to go to, I was a priest at the time, you gotta go talk to her. You gotta, you gotta say goodbye because she's not, she, she's staying alive for you. She's afraid who's gonna take care of you. And so I had to visit her and actually say to her, it's okay, it's time to go, I'm gonna be okay. I had to give her permission. And I remember that day, I remember saying to her, have a meeting with God in St. Anthony, whatever you guys decide is okay. And the next morning she died. Sometimes we have those hard tasks we have to do to give somebody permission to let them know it's okay to pass on. And sometimes these situations occur in different areas of life. And that's where that constant letting go and saying goodbye is important. And so we'll cover a lot of this in more detail. What I want to do, I want to spend next week concentrating on denial, anger, and bargaining, just on those three elements of the grieving process. Then the following week, I want to concentrate on sadness and acceptance. And then the fourth week, I'm going to introduce Pat Oakes, who's our grief counselor. I'll be here with her. I'm going to introduce Pat and have Pat give, do a presentation to you on how they handle the grieving process, talk about grief. She's a powerful lady who has been through her own stuff. She's been working in this area for a long period of time, has a lot of experience. And so I think you'll appreciate that piece of the grieving process also. And so I wanna take time tonight to say a prayer to help us to begin to understand the importance of the process of grieving and to help us to help others to allow ourselves to go through that process. So let us pray. God, we come before you in prayer today. We come before you and we ask you in a very special way to be our guide, to be our strength. Please, we beg of you to walk with us as we go through the struggles of this life. Teach us to realize that you are constantly sending messengers into our life if just we ask for help. We try to open our hearts to listen to the messengers. Teach us to learn the importance of letting go. Teach us to realize that 
all those who have gone before us are also teachers in our life. Help us to be grateful for them and to help us to turn them over to you. We pray as a family, we gather here together, especially a family in recovery, to ask that you help us through our transition, through our own changes in life. Help us to let go of the old and be open to the new. Help us to realize that we can learn from what we've gone through to move to where we are today. Acceptance is a beautiful spiritual word. It's very easy to come to it in our head. But God, we need your help to help us to come to it in our spirit and in our heart. To come to a place of peace, a place of serenity, a place of calmness. And so we ask that you walk the journey with us, that we can walk, walk alongside of you and teach us to ask for help and guidance on this journey and never try to do it alone and to realize that we need help, we need strength, we need support. Help us to reach out both to you and to others to help us on this journey as we go through the struggle of our daily life. So we ask this and we pray for this in your name. We ask that you bless us and guide us. Bless all those who have gone before us. Have their spirit and God and God bless and help us on our journey today. And we ask this in God's name. Amen. And now I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and we'll say the, the we version of the serenity prayer together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not mine, be done. 